Good evening, I'm Jim Whaley. Tonight on Cinema Showcase from Miami Beach, I'm very happy to have as my guest one of the world's top entertainers, a great star of films, nightclubs, and television, Anne Margaret. Her new film is one you're going to be hearing a lot about if you haven't already, Ken Russell's movie Up Tommy. We'll be talking about that film tonight, have several scenes from it, and hopefully talk about several of her other great films. So join me tonight as I talk with Anne Margaret on Cinema Showcase. Thank you very much for joining Cinema Showcase tonight. And Anne Margaret, it is really a pleasure to be here talking with you. It's a pleasure to be here. Tommy is quite an experience any way you look at it. And may I say, and I'm going to use a word I don't often use, you are sensational in it. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank what? You. Now, last night at the, um, at the premiere, the audience had a lot of under 35, under 30 people in it. Is this the audience the film is primarily aimed at? Oh dear, it's, I think it's for several age groups, yeah. all age groups, um, whoever is receptive to uh, what it has to offer. Yeah. Before we get too far into it, could you tell the audience who may not have any idea what Tommy is about a little something <laughs> about it? I know that's difficult. It's so hard to explain, Tommy. Um, it's very emotional, it's very powerful, it's spiritual, it's uh, got a lot of love in it. Mm -hmm. It's about awareness, awareness of oneself and those around you. It's about tolerance, it's about um, cruelty, it's about everything. Mm -hmm. I think that everyone that sees it is going to have a different meaning. Yeah. Well, then, actually, it could have... I wonder if it will have different meanings to different age groups, if a particular age group will be isolated in its particular opinion of it. No, just individually. I yeah. think each person will have a different meaning. Yeah. I know you had never made a, a film for Ken Russell, but surely you have been aware of his flamboyant <laughs> reputation, hadn't you? Yes, his reputation preceded him. <laughs> I really did not know what to expect. He is um, very complex. Mm-hmm. And he was really very gentle with me. Um, now, was that but I love that he, he was extremely demanding. Yeah. But I like that because I like to be stretched. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, only by being stretched can you learn and grow. Mm -hmm. In each new venture, I don't want to do anything that's, quote, safe. Mm -hmm. So then really each new film is a, a learning experience for me. Oh, you. yes, and mm -hmm. I learned a lot. Jerry Tommy. Yeah. I think we're all aware of, um, of the more bizarre aspects of Ken Russell's films, but how is he actually on the set? Is he, is he comparable to the other directors you've worked with in terms of, um, is he calm or is he, how is he? Um, he gets really engrossed mm -hmm. in uh, what he's doing. I've never worked with a director who does as many takes as Ken. We did on the average of 15 or 16 takes each shot, uh, medium, close, and long. That's incredible. Um, so if, you, if you're doing a very emotional scene, by the 10th take, <laughs> you are just banging your head against the wall and uh, screaming. Very interesting what he does to your head. What I was getting at, though, is do you think he is, um, is he a mild-mannered individual? Or you've, you've said he's complex, and I guess that really covers it all, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Many things going on yeah. inside of Ken. Yeah. We have several scenes from the picture, and this first, I believe, is just a series of, of scenes, isn't it? Does it need any setting up? I don't think it does. It just shows uh, many of the people who are in the film. Okay, why don't we look at that right now? All right. Here is a montage of scenes from Anne Margaret's new film, Tommy. He stands like a statue, we got fall of the machine. Feeling all the bumpers, always playing clean. He plays my intuition, that digit counters fall. That deaf, dumb, and blind kid shall play the million pound ball. Ball wizard, they have to dance with a pinball wizard, don't you? 
shake his fingers clutch watch his body rise A scene from Ken Russell's new film, Tommy, starring Anne Margaret. In addition to yourself, the film features a number of exciting people. Who else is in the film? Uh, all of the Who, uh, Oliver Reed, Jack Nicholson, Tina Turner, Elton John, Eric Clapton. You know, Tina Turner was such a surprise to me. She, um, she is just fantastic. Isn't she movie. great? Really is. Oh, just unbelievable. What, how long was the picture in production? Originally, I was only supposed to be there two and a half months, but uh, it ended up being five months. That's a long time, really, for any picture. I think five months, that's, isn't it? Actual shooting time? The only other picture that took that long, actually six months, was uh, Bye Bye Birdie. Mm -hmm. yeah. what which was 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what interested you most when you were given the idea of doing Tommy, what interested you most about it? When Ken Russell sent me this script uh, a year ago, October, I was really excited because I had loved Tommy from the first time I heard it in 1968. And I'd always wanted to work with Ken because of mm -hmm. all his brilliant things that he did. Um, I love the fact that I got to age from 20 to 45 in the mm -hmm. film, have a nervous breakdown on screen. Uh, there was a childbirth scene, a scene right after childbirth. And it was the first time that I had ever played a woman who was so bitter, mm -hmm. um, guilt-ridden and frustrated. But the bitterness, personally, I, I'm not uh, a bitter person at mm -hmm. all. I'm very thankful of that. But that was a challenge. Do you think roles like that, this is something that people debate all the time, are the more dramatic roles the more difficult, or is it just as difficult to maintain a light comic touch in a film? I don't know. I think they're all just a difficult. If you're doing a very honest performance, you're mm -hmm. really into the character. Yeah. You have worked with some of the, the best directors in the business, Frank Capra. Uh, who is, a, I must confess, an idol of mine, as well as a friend, uh, George Sidney, Mike Nichols. Is there any one quality a very good director has? Do all of these directors have something in common? Understanding of you as an individual. Mm -hmm. And I guess they would all have a patience, too, don't they? I mean, that's... Oh, yes. They have to. If someone... If a director would yell at me, I would just disintegrate into a little puddle <laughs> and you'd never see me again. <laughs> that would be it. I never grew up uh, in a household where there was any harsh words. Mm -hmm. You can't get anything out of me by yelling at me. That's why I find it so hard to understand how 
actors can respond to these supposedly tyrannical directors, and we know some of them are tyrannical. No, I can't. I don't see how they do it. You know, the scene in Tommy that the audience last night went crazy over with the most vigor, I think, and the one that everybody's going to be talking about is probably the one you remember best, and that's the scene with the TV set. <laughs> Was that a, a difficult scene? Well, uh... I knew it w was going to be very bizarre mm -hmm. <laughs> when I read it in the script. I really had no idea how Ken was going to do it. Mm -hmm. Because reading it is one thing, and then actually being in it is another. It took seven days, 300 pounds of beans, and I don't know how many pounds of chocolates. <laughs> and I love chocolates. <laughs> But by the fourth day, I was so nauseous. What I loved, the one thing that I loved doing was taking that book and just throwing it <laughs> at the picture of like, myself. Yeah. Why, did, why did that thrill you so much? <laughs> oh, it was just, you know how when you're a little kid, you love to do things like that. Yeah. I never did things like that when I was a, I was always a good little girl. <laughs> I never got a chance to make mud pies and... All that. So maybe there were a few frustrations <laughs> up that you were able to release. Sure. <laughs> I always had clean little party dresses. And that was fun. I know you were interested in singing and dancing uh, since early childhood. Were you encouraged by your parents at all? <sighs> they knew that I loved singing, dancing, and mm. they gave me the singing lessons, dancing lessons, and piano lessons and everything. But they never pushed me like stage That's parents. Good. They never were like that. Yeah. That's good because so often, I, I can imagine, so many children are um, left with scars that take forever to, uh, to get rid of because they were either pushed into something or not encouraged. Oh, I know. Uh, my childhood was a very happy one. It was never destroyed by destructive parents. Yeah. What do you consider your first big professional, um, your first professional job as an entertainer? Oh, dear. The very first, I was about 16, and I was a band singer with the Danny Ferguson Band at the Muehlbach Hotel in Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> it was called the Terrace Grill, and it's still called that now. It was just there four days ago. Oh, going back to the old starting place. Huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. When did the association with George Burns come about? How did he find you? That was 1961, I believe. And I auditioned for him, and I was in his show at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I was there for 11 nights. And there were uh, 20th Century Fox and RCA uh, talent scouts in the audience. Mm -hmm. And each night, Jack Benny was there, and he would go on stage with Mr. Burns. Mm -hmm. And one night in the wings, uh, Jack Benny asked me if I wanted to be on his TV show. And I said, sure. You know, I'd love to. So that was the first time I was on television. What are your fondest memories of Jack Benny? Oh, um, in the dressing room, the way that he would uh, just be hysterical at uh, Mr. Burns' jokes. He just loved to hear uh, Mr. Burns tell jokes, the things that had happened to him and to them mm -hmm. through the years. It's so. It's so sad that, uh, as you know, when he passed away, he was, I think, was just about to sign to do a film with, with George Burns, wasn't he? Mm, with uh, Walter Matthau, the well, odd that's couple. Right. Yeah, right. And now Mr. Burns is right. doing it, yes. Right. All the, it's amazing, all the happiness that man brought so many people. Ah, uh, yes, yes. St was State Fair the first film? No, Pocket, Pocket Full of Miracles, of miracles but that. if you blinked your eyes, you wouldn't have seen me. <laughs> Very small part. So you made your debut then, really, with uh, with Frank Capra, directing. Yes. This is a man I have admired for a long time, and I'm, I'm privileged to be able to call him a friend. He has made some of the greatest movies I think anybody's ever made. Yes, he has. Uh, what what was your association with him like? Oh, 
Well, he was really very uh, kind and patient with me because uh, I had no idea. This was my very first film, and you mm -hmm. can imagine uh, being in scenes with Betty Davis <laughs> and Glenn Ford <laughs> and uh, Thomas Mitchell and uh, Edward Everett Horton. Uh, I had no idea what the difference was between a close-up and a long shot, mm -hmm. and I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I was just terrified. I was so, I was just happy to remember my lines. <laughs> and um, Betty Davis was so great. I remember when it was a close-up of me, of course I didn't know it was a close-up, but she knew mm -hmm. and she was by the camera and she said, hairdresser, hairdresser, please come and fix Aunt Margaret's hair, it looks lousy. And. Uh, then she said, now this is your close-up and I want you to look nice and she had the makeup man come and she was really, uh, she's a great lady. Yeah. Now is that rare in this business when someone that established will take a kind interest in a newcomer? No, I tell you something, I have had nothing but um, good, really fine experiences mm -hmm. doing the, uh, I sound like a Pollyanna, <laughs> but uh, in the 27 or 28 films that I've done, I've never run into any trouble. I always heard stories coming to Hollywood uh, where um, a star, a um, male and female who were the stars of the film actually, you know, despised one another. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they would have a rough time doing love scenes. That never happened. That's great. But I think it's marvelous that you were able to make your film debut with someone like Capra, who I think above all is such a compassionate person. Yes, such a I was so person. fortunate. Because I wonder what impressions you would now have, or you would have had then had you made your film debut with someone like Priminger, who is known for... Uh, I don't know. You know? Well, I'm, I'm just glad it was with Capra. <laughs> in State Fair, you worked with uh, another great individual, and I've got to mention him because too often the people behind the scenes don't get the credit they deserve, and that's Alfred Newman. Yes. What do you recall about, about him? He was the musical director on State Fair. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant man. Um, what can I say? I mean, he did so many movies, mm -hmm. so many unbelievable movies for how many years? 20, 30? Oh, 35 years, I believe. 35 yeah. years. Yeah. And I think all too often people don't realize the importance of, in a dramatic film, of a dramatic score. Oh, sure. You know? And it's terribly, terribly important. Sure. Let me talk about Bye Bye Birdie for a minute because this is a favorite film of mine. And here again, you worked with a director I admire very much, George Sidney. In fact, you made, what, three films three. with yes. him? Now, he goes back a long way. He made some of the great MGM musicals. Showboat. And, uh, Man, he gets your gun. Yes. All those great things. Yes. I bet he was fun to work with. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've always admired in his films the great movement the camera seems to have. You know? so, uh, Unbelievable, man. Yeah. Of, of your early films, which ones do you recall most fondly? Of the ones you made, say, from 61 to 66 or 67? Oh, dear. <laughs> Let's say it's so hard to, to single out one because yeah. I, I really I enjoyed each one for a different reason and I learned even from the bad films mm -hmm. that I did I learned something yeah. I want to talk to about carnal knowledge but before that let's get into another scene from Tommy your new film and this is I think another montage featuring just you isn't it or is it a montage? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Why don't we all take a look and see what it is? All right. Here's another scene featuring Anne Margaret from Ken Russell's Tommy.
A scene from Ken Russell's new film, Tommy, starring Anne Margaret, Oliver Reed, Jack Nicholson, and all sorts of other great people, Tina Turner. I was amazed uh, in Tommy at how very good Mr. Dolphy was. I think he has a great career as an actor ahead of him. Do you agree? Mm, yes, he does. Right now, he's doing uh, Fonz List with Ken mm -hmm. Russell. Isn't Ringo Starr in that picture soon? He's playing the Pope, I yes. can't quite visualize that for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Am I prejudiced or what? I mean, yeah, I think it would be very interesting. You know, as I mentioned before we, we saw that last scene, I do want to talk about carnal knowledge because, my goodness, what a fine performance you gave in that film and what a good film it is. What was particularly challenging about it to you? Oh, my. Probably the hardest thing about carnal knowledge was that um, I became that character so much, and she was such a tragic lady that I brought it home with me, mm. and I became that character, and I, I had nightmares about um, that film for six months afterwards. Hmm. I hope that never happens again. We are, I think, all full of admiration for you because of your um, amazing recovery after your accident in Las Vegas. Does the recovery period after such an accident force you into any kind of reevaluation of anything? What, um, what goes through your mind? Definitely. Um, you find out what's important. You find out that um, life is really very short and life is extremely precious. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm so happy when I wake up each day Yeah. that there's another day. I know you would not wish any such thing on, on anybody else, but I think if we could all realize that, how much better off we would all be. So, there has been a lot of talk uh, in today's film circles that there aren't enough good roles for women as there used to be and when they talk about the great roles for Betty Davis and Olivia de Havilland and Joan Crawford. Do you feel this is changing or do you feel there still are good roles? It's definitely changing because uh, how many male-male relationships <laughs> can you have? I mean, right. It's been eight million of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's changing. The cycle is come around. Yeah. But I wonder if we ever will get back to the, I won't say the women's picture, but uh, yeah, uh, the women's picture. I wonder if we'll ever really have that again. Not the same kind as there were in the 40s, no, mm -hmm. because we're all different. What kind you know? of films do you enjoy most? I'm really a movie fan. Mm -hmm. um, I just like good films, no matter what kind. They're musicals, comedies, dramatic. You know, we were briefly talking uh, during a break about people who might not appreciate Tommy, and I think it's regrettable for anybody to 
close their mind to anything simply because they've not experienced it before. Right. So I hope really everybody can go see If Tony. something is new, you should give it a chance. That's right. What's, what's next for you? We have only a few seconds left. What's your next film or whatever? I'm doing uh, a film this summer and a television special with uh, the two gentlemen that I worked with last year, Dwight Hemming and Gary mm -hmm. Smith. Um, let's see, I'm going to spend an evening at the White House. Great. Uh, I'm going to Lake Tahoe again, going to Japan, uh, doing a lot of things. So you're not going to be very, very busy, are you? No. <laughs> I want to thank you very much for taking this time out uh, and talk with me. It's been a pleasure. And come to Atlanta and see us. I would love to. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. My thanks to all of you for watching. So from tonight in Miami Beach, 